Now that I have the trees tapped and the sap is flowing, albeit fairly slowly for this time of year, it's time to get the sap stove to a much more usable state than it is right now, where it sits in this snowbank. Originally, I was planning to set it up somewhere around the workshop here, and eventually build a shed roof over it. But I've been thinking about it for the past few weeks, and it has occurred to me I might like to have the stove very close to the firewood. Brilliant! But, of course, that means I need to move it to the other side of the Nights and Weekends homestead. that time of year when you really get to see how out of shape you've become over the winter. Woo, that's hard work. I don't think I should be breathing that hard for moving this thing on a sled across the snow. You'd think I picked it up and carried it, how hard I'm breathing. What'd you find, Woodchuck? Make sure you get him good. Sled on you, you can carry him. I haven't tapped trees in a couple of years. The job I had before my current gig included a lot of work in Maine's legislature, which is in session from January through at least April so I was quite busy during maple season. I know one legislator who owns a commercial maple sugaring operation and I have no idea how she does it. I'm guessing that since her operation is big enough to have several employees, she can get time away for the season to be in session. At any rate, the last time I finished sapping, I put my boiling pan, which was a gift from a friend many years ago, under my workshop to keep it out of the rain and snow. I wish I had thought ahead and taken it out from under here before it snowed this year. This took way longer than it should have. I have been intending to have a fabrication shop in my area convert a piece of steel I've been saving into an evaporation pan to fit this converted oil tank. I've had the design in my head for a while and have even drawn it out and taken measurements, but I never got to it. That's why I just dug out my old sap pan. This thing is really great because it was a gift, which makes it mean more to me, and it was free, which is my favorite price. Plus, it works. It's got a lot of surface area, so the sap boils down quickly. But it's hard to get the finished syrup out of the thing while it's boiling hot and there's smoke pouring out of the stove. I'm guessing this thing wasn't designed to be a sap pan originally. That said, it's what I have right now, and I've got a few days of sap collected already. I don't want it to go bad, so I need to get boiling. But when I tried to put it on the stove, I ran into a problem. The dimensions of the sap pan are small enough that it just misses sitting on the edge of the stove. So I have to figure out a way to hold it up above the firebox. Meanwhile, I also want to close off the top of the stove where the sap pan doesn't cover. Eventually, I want to put in a baffle system and a chimney, though I don't need to do any of that right now. At this point, I just want a box that will contain the fire and hold up the sap pan above that fire. But I figure I may as well get started on that part of the design by cutting the top of the oil tank.
I'm not sure why I thought this would sit nicely on the tank from which it was cut, but needless to say at this point, it didn't. Cutting the tank seems to have relieved some of the pressure that keeps it in the shape it's supposed to be in when it holds oil. Also, sitting outside with one side on the ground collecting snow all winter probably warped this thing as well. Whatever the cause, I will need to weld this portion back on if I want it to sit and act as a cover for the pan-free space. I don't have time for that, and at any rate, I don't have welding skills or the equipment I would need anyway. So, I decided to just invert the cover and drop it into the stove, essentially trying to make this firebox smaller in the hope that more of the heat will travel up to the sap pan rather than out into the open volume of the part of the stove with no pan to heat. Now it's time to install a door. I've measured and marked everything and already cut the door itself. Now I need to cut the hole it's going to cover. I'm not sure how much longer my metal blade will last. Cutting through the top of the oil tank ate through a lot of it. I'm almost down to the nub of the blade now, and I don't think it'll make it all the way through this rectangle I've got marked. Look at that. Well, I was right. Luckily, the local hardware store had a metal cutting blade to fit my circular saw, so I wasn't delayed too long before getting back to it. In my quest to solve the problem of the pan fitting down inside the stove, I remember these old meat hooks, which I've been storing for years. They're very useful in several different applications. These things were left in an old barn in one of the homes Em and I first owned right after college. I didn't have any idea what they were when I first saw them hanging in the shed, and I couldn't imagine what use they would have. But with my personality, I figured they'd be put to some use, for something, at some point and I couldn't get rid of them. I thought they'd make a good sap pan holder, but I'm not liking it after setting it up and ruminating for a few hours. This would make the sap pan even harder to handle than it already is. I won't be able to reach down into the stove to grab the handles. So I need to figure out a way to raise it so the handles are above the rim of the stove. I like the base to sit down in the stove so the heat is traveling up the sides of the pan, making the sap boil even more efficiently. My plan now is to make some brackets out of rebar. All right, well that didn't work. I brought those pieces of rebar hoping I can make some little L brackets to hold my sap pan at a specific height on the sap stove. And I was hoping to be able to just bend them without using any heat, but I don't have enough leverage and I really don't wanna mess around with them. So I think I'm gonna return those. And we have a bunch of old pieces here. Might, might do the trick. After thinking things through overnight, I decided I was making things way more complicated than they needed to be for a temporary setup, and just went and bought three pieces of four foot rebar with the intention of simply laying them across the top of the stove so the pan can rest atop them.
Finally, it's time for the first burn. This test fire is going to serve two purposes. First, I've put a bit of water in the pan. I want to bring it to a boil and then scrub the pan with steel wool while it's over the fire. It's been sitting out of use for two years after all. Secondly, the fire will burn out any small amount of residual oil left on the sides of the tank. There wasn't much in the tank when I found it on the side of the road with a free sign next to it, and what little oil there was burned off as soon as I cut into the top with a torch. But there's bound to be some residual, and I don't want it contaminating my syrup. So this fire will act as a cleanser for both the stove and the pan. Then it will be time to boil some sap.